Hey everybody, this is Vash. So today I wanted to take a look at installing KVM, KVM, QEMU, and Vert Manager. Uh, I've installed in the past, I've went ahead and, you know, just done the virtual box thing, but I wanted to try something a bit different for this uh, PC. I've got a, you know, I've got a nice processor and all that, and uh, 32 gigs of RAM, so I figured I may as well just see what I can do with uh, something a little more fancy than the uh, standard virtual box. So that is what we're going to work on today. I am using this Computing for Geeks guide um, that I think is pretty good. Um, I'm going to put this link in the description. I am going to skip step two because I do not think this is something that I actually need, but I am doing this blind. So, meaning I'm, I'm doing this for the first time. So, if I end up needing this, I'll have to come back and actually do this. But, uh, ultimately, I am thinking that we should be okay without this because I just don't think this is something that I'm going to care about personally. If you're more interested in this particular piece of it, definitely, you know, see about running this. But I do not think I need this. Uh, then we're going to start the service and blah, blah, blah. I've got this all I've got this all in a, a document. I'm not going to do step five either because I don't care about virtualization within virtualization. Don't care. Um, we are also going to look at some information from Cubicle Nate's site. He has a write-up from OpenSUSE. And um, I am going to look at the setup once we get to that point. But I will also have a link to his blog in the description there. But... I just wanted to show you the sources for what we're doing. I'm going to be pulling the commands from a K writer article or a not article, a K writer file that I have. So I'm going to go and open this on the other screen and do that. But ultimately, this, you know, hopefully this goes smoothly. We'll see. Maybe it won't. And maybe this will be a total train wreck. But uh, that's half the fun, right? So let's go ahead, I'm going to move this out of the way, and I already have my terminal here, and here are my steps. And so first thing is first, we're going to install everything. It's going to ask for my password here. I'm going to type that, and it's going to take a few minutes here, and I will probably speed this up in post, but we'll see. May not take too long. I've got a decent connection here for raw speed. Um, I need to. I've been messing with the um, the desktop just a little bit. I've uh, made some tweaks and things like that. Um, I'm gonna have to make a note on some of this stuff of what I've done just so that I remember if I end up going a different direction. I think I will end up on Plasma. I'm just not sure if I want to end up on Manjaro or if I want to go a different direction or just you know plain Arch or if I want to go. Um, even something like uh, oh, that was pretty. That was pretty quick. I'm still undecided, but uh, for the moment, this is what I'm going to be using. So this is going to be taking. Uh, let me look back at this documentation. Right, and so now we are. Yeah, we're going to install the IP tables packages. Okay, so hopefully that mic handling was not too crazy. Oh. No, we don't want to install that because we've already done that. I didn't didn't copy the new one here. So control C. There we go. And that should have yeah I was gonna say that's probably pretty quick. Okay, so now we're gonna enable our service and then we're gonna start the service. Um, the enable will make it so that the service starts every time um, the system starts up, which will allow us to just boot right into a vert manager or something like that. And then we're going to enable, start the service rather right now so that it's running. So this is going to use Vim. I'm not going to use Vim. I'm, I do want to learn Vim at some point, but I'm going to use Nano just because I know no more about how to use that. And so now we're in this, and maybe somebody knows, but the thing that I'm noticing here is like all of these commands are activating automatically. Um, it's throwing me off just a little bit, but I mean, it, it, it's okay. I'm guessing it's because there's a hard return at the end of these lines, and if I adjust that, that, that probably would help. 
but we have went through step one. Um, we're skipping step two. We've already went through step three from that document. And so now I am in editing and then it says it's around line 85. So let's scroll down. I The only problem is this doesn't have a, uh, uh, I think this is what we want. Here we go. So restricted to root by default. And so we want to enable the group and we'll delete that. And it would, it would help if I actually, you know, would hit the right button. Now I'm going to go to line 85. We'll have to make sure that that put the Unix sock permission for the RO socket. Ah, here we go. That So I was on the right one. And so I think if we keep scrolling down here, we want to look for around line 102. So control, control shift and then symbol. And there's where it's talking about 070, which is also something we need to do. Or no, that is what we need to do. So Unix socks RW permission 0770. That is correct. We'll uncomment that. And so now that we've done that, we should be able just to save this file. So control X. Save the modified buffer is yes. We're going to leave the file name the exact same. So sudo user mod. And let's. I got other things open on another even desktop. So I believe what this is doing is it's saying going to do the user mod, but then it's going to figure out who I am. And then we're going to say new group. So now we should be able to, and then we just have to restart the service. And if everything is as we expect, then we should be all set. So after my initial setup, I had a terrible time getting the K the VMs that I was installing to actually performance-wise do all right. Um, they were running very, very slow. What I think ended up happening was that my QEMU was running without KVM based on the searches that I did over the past day or so to try to, you know, if I had time to figure that out. So one thing to start off with, make sure you go into your BIOS and you check out and make sure that your virtualization support is on. Um, this page, and I'll have this link in the description, this page talks about how to make sure, how to look for that and just check to see if ultimately this is something that you can do and if your kernel supports it. Very useful, but if if it does actually show up here, you need to make sure that you actually go enable in your BIOS, because that could be one thing that can stop it from actually working with KVM, and you do not want to use a virtual machine that's not running with KVM in this particular setup, because it is very, very slow. Um, well, I, I guess most people probably wouldn't. This goes on just to do the same thing that we've already done with um, the other stuff. I did check through here to see if there was any kind of extra extra thing. I didn't really see anything different here that I hadn't already done. Um, may would it, be, it may be worth looking back through your packages and making sure you actually have all these installed from our original setup. But the other thing I found uh, was this page, and this is talking about how do I know I'm using KVM? And this is where I came to this particular link. This is talking about using Monitor 1 and QEMU, but from what I can tell, Vert Manager doesn't allow this very easily. And um, if you keep, I, there, I found another page where they're talking about how to send a command to that, but it ended up getting a little, con a little convoluted. I went to this page though in the ArchWiki, and sure enough, 
if you keep looking around, you'll stumble upon the... There's one particular thing that I wanted to show you here. And it's the extras. There we go. So this is what I ended up installing, the extras. I believe I did a reboot after that. But uh, since I've done that, and since I've, you know, went in and checked these settings and, you know, did my BIOS and made sure all that was good, um, since I've done all that, everything's been running really, really well. And I'll be showing some examples of uh, the quick installs and stuff. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you a bit of the research that led me to getting this all to actually cooperate. But it's probably a good idea to go ahead and if, if, you, set your, um, if you set your virtualization on before you do all this, it probably just works, and your and your KVM is fine. But uh, if you're like me and you didn't, um, that is one thing I had to do. And then the other command I, I used is this right here. And this may be another one you have to try. Like I say, I'm hoping that if you're trying this and you're actually going in and and you know setting up your virtualization on your BIOS first, that none of this is going to matter. But just in case, this is another command I ended up finding uh, during my searches and ended up checking out. So I just wanted to try to provide as much information as I could. And that way, hopefully somebody can figure this out if they you know, are having issues going forward. What you're watching right now is the install of Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. This took around five minutes. I've sped up the time just to make this a bit shorter and to kind of show the entire process. My OBS does crash during the middle because I was trying to switch sources. I was seeing some screen tearing. I believe this is due to a GTK application specifically, and I'm using Plasma, which is QT. So I think it's something to do with that. I'm going to have to research that a bit further and see ultimately what that ends up meaning for my you know my setup and seeing how I can fix that but the install was really quick this um one th once I got the KVM and set up and you know working correctly this install took uh right around five minutes altogether and that's including me going through all the settings uh I'm not really changing anything about them I'm not p picking anything specific you know I'm the only thing the only thing that really took any serious amount of time was just typing in my username and my password and all that but uh, I left all that default so once I you know once I typed in the username and password that's that's basically it on that screen but it all all flowed really well all went really quick um, like I say the install was just right around five minutes altogether which is pretty good and then uh, I also installed salient OS fedora 31 all three are working great after the installs all three installed relatively quickly so ultimately, uh, enabling that KVM uh, really allowed this to go a lot further and really allowed this to, to work a lot more smoothly. Ultimately, this video ended up being a lot longer than I expected, but I didn't want to exclude the troubleshooting steps because I felt they were necessary to get somebody past the problems that I was having. So. I have a clip after this of me showing off my initial reactions and the performance of Ubuntu 1804 in this VM, but uh, I wanted to include more. I just didn't want this video to go even longer than it did. There it is. Right up. Let's do an Ubuntu. Um, let's do display. Displays. I've set the, um, we're going to do 1920 by 1080. Whoop, that's 1200. 1080. Apply. There we go. And keep the changes. So now, I mean, as you can see here, it's it's running pretty decently. Um, I've given it 10 cores. I've given it 8 gigs of RAM. It's coming up. It's loading in LibreOffice. I'm typing in really fast. Uh, the store. Let's not do Amazon. Let's do files. I can scroll through all the documents and stuff really quickly here. And uh, welcome to Ubuntu, welcome to settings, blah, blah, blah. Let's see what other actual apps we have. Let's kill some of this stuff now. Oh, here we go. That's what's throwing me off. I forget that uh, 
a GIMP, or I'm sorry, not GIMP. I forget. I'm thinking I was looking for GIMP to see if I could, in, you know, just what would happen if I ran it. But what I was saying is there's two menus. There's the activities menu that shows you what you have open, and then there's this menu. And I keep hitting the Windows super key, whatever, and that's not what's coming up. Anyway, so now that we've got that, we would probably want to patch and all that stuff. But again, we're not not super super crazy about any of this stuff. Um, so to do, let's launch the to do app, and there we go. I mean, it's it's moving right along. We can go to duck duck go uh, test, and I mean it's very responsive etc etc seems to be doing good so now th and with that we'll wrap up the video here i plan to use this tool more on the channel as we go along just to do some distro challenges and check out new features and new distributions that come out so you should see more of this thanks for checking it out and let me know what you think in the comments below